Hello guys and welcome back to episode 2 of our EAFC 25 career mode starting here of course with Southampton. If you haven't seen the previous episode definitely make sure to go and check it out as we sort of introduce the save and the new game here with the Saints. Unfortunately we did get off to a losing start on match day 1 with that 2-0 defeat to Newcastle at St. James's Park. But I think we're just going to dive straight into today. I'm still trying to get my head around the new menus, how everything works. And uh, we are going to close out the summer transfer window today as well. So uh, looking to make another signing. But taking on Nottingham Forest here, good opportunity to get some points on the board. Of course, Southampton did lose the fixture in real life so i'm hoping unlike in real life we are gonna get some points on the board here uh, nottingham forest who also lost on the opening day of the season looking to get at least at least our first point on the board and i would absolutely love to claim all three desperately need to get a point on the board we have got the um the first round of the carabao cup uh, in midweek where thankfully go on ben Oh, decent effort. We've been drawn against um, Cambridge United of League One, so I'm hoping that's going to be a bit of a gimme. Here we go. Here's the little POV camera. I quite like that. Of course, I'm new to, uh, to the, the new gen console. I don't know if that's a new feature this year, but um, yeah, very interested to see the new cameras. Go on. Oh, I couldn't squeeze it in, and now Bella Kotchaps hit the deck and stayed down. Here's Brereton Diaz into Archer, who gets the start today. Brereton Diaz again. Now KWP lifts that in. Cameron Archer, what a save. And I think the flag's gone up, has it? I'm not too sure here. Yeah, I think the flag's gone up. Cameron Archer just <laughs> a couple of toes offside. But so close to giving us the lead there. It's been a really positive start from the Saints. As Leslie now finds Fernandez and Archer. Ben through the gap for Cam. Surely our first goal in the Premier League. And it's the Archer. Do that trademark celebration, my lad. We used him last year in FC24 with the Blades. And we've inherited him here with Southampton. And he gets the first goal of the save. Nice little POV camera angle here as he drills it into that bottom corner. And the Saints take the lead and could be on for their first three points of the season on just match day two. That's a huge goal here at St Mary's. Tell you what, we have actually played really well today. We've not created a huge amount, but we've defended really well. And there's Downs looking for the goal scorer again. It's amazing what a goal can do. Cameron Archer on the volley sends it wide. And now Southampton playing with a little bit of confidence. 25 to play, leading by just one. We know that our defence has been a little bit shaky. Are we going to be able to hold on here and see the victory out on match day one? Well, there is the whistle at St Mary's and Southampton do hold on. It's a narrow 1-0 victory in our first home game of the season. A clean sheet for Aaron Ramsdale on his full home debut. And we flipped the scoreline round from real life. It was Forrest who won by a goal to nil at St Mary's in real life. But here in the game, Cameron Archer fires us to our first three points of the season. That is a huge result on match day two. Well, we've uh, we've just got back to the menu. Let's see how bad the injury is for Bella Kotchap. Now, I don't want to replace him. Um, oh, this is so, I'll tell you what, some of these are really annoying. Bella Kotchap. Okay, it's a broken ankle, so it's not too bad. At least it's not a dreaded broken toe, but he will be out for three months. So that is bad news for the German Armel Bella Kotchap. Well, just before we jump into this one, we see Ben Brereton Diaz named in the Premier League Team of the Week. That's quite a cool little feature. Um, so Brereton Diaz, the Chilean, getting into uh, the Team of the Week. But let's jump into our second game of the episode. Um, it does come in midweek, Tuesday night, away at Cambridge in the uh in the second round i think yeah second round of the carabao cup this is a bit of a gimme so let's try and build on our win 
on uh, on match day two of the Premier League season. Jumping into the game away at Cambridge, lots of changes as the Carabao Cup is my lowest priority. But against the League One side, we should be targeting uh, progression to the third round. Come on, you Saints. Lana picked it up again. We're in the armband tonight. Into Ross Stewart. And Scott turns nicely, finds Adam Armstrong, who fires in the opening goal. I said we'd expect to win today and continue our good start after that win against Nottingham Forest in the previous game. Massive favourites to beat the League One side. And this should be a, a bit of a testosterone flowing game for the centre forwards. Stewart pegs it back to Lalana. There's Armstrong. Flag stays down. And Southampton do have their second. It's Adam Armstrong once again. A brace for the Englishman in the first half here. And we do look set to reach the third round of the Carabao Cup, as expected. Richard slides it forward to Sully Kai Kai. Charlie Taylor comes across. They've worked it into the middle. Lavery shoots and beats Gavin Bazunu at the near post. Here's Maxwell Corne, of course, signed from West Ham. I think it's a season-long loan. Oh, that's a nice turn. And Fraser off the bench. It's going to drop in. Terrible goalkeeping. Well, there is the whistle all over here in Cambridge. And it was a pretty comfortable victory for Southampton in the end. We had a little bit of a scare when Shane Lavery scored the uh, goal for Cambridge to bring them back into the game. But we were pretty comfortable and Ryan Fraser's third secured the victory. What is going on there? Come on EA, need to sort stuff like this out. We can't be having bugs like this in the game. Southampton through to the third round of the Carabao Cup. And I think we should find out who we'll face in the next round straight away. Well, with that win, you can see Southampton up to mid-table in the Premier League. Let's pick the Carabao Cup. And, well, we're away from home once again, but taking on another League One side as we will travel to the Valley to take on Charlton Athletic. Again, I'll be making lots and lots of changes as it is my lowest priority. But to be honest, I'm happy facing EFL sides for as long as possible. It's Charlton in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Wow, big transfer here as Bruno Gimmerice has uh, jumped ship from Newcastle and joined up with Arsenal for £69 million pounds as Fabrizio Romano reveals. Um, we've got a game here before transfer deadline day. Uh, taking on the Bees, Thomas Frank's side yet to pick up a victory in the Premier League so far with uh, one draw and one defeat. So I think what I'm going to do is just jump into this next game and then I'll probably make one more signing on transfer deadline day with around 30 million still left in the budget. So yeah, traveling to the GTEC to take on Brentford, looking to try and build on back-to-back -back victories in all competitions and that big win against Nottingham Forest at St. Mary's. Can we pick up our first away day victory of the season? Let's find out away at the GTEC. Come on, you Saints. So we're underway here at the GTEC, and this is the fixture that Southampton scored their only goal of the Premier League season in real life. Uh, it was a great strike by Yukinari Sugawara. And uh, yeah, so far, as I mentioned in the intro of the first episode, no points on the board, just one goal scored in the Premier League. I've had quite a lot of fitness issues again heading into this game. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there because I've set it up exactly how I would have done last year as Armstrong. Brilliant dribbling. Oh, what a goal by Adam Armstrong. Competing with Cameron Archer for that starting lineup position. Archer scored our first goal of the Premier League season. Armstrong got two in midweek. Maybe one last chance for Brentford before the half ends. Igor Thiago, the new man in the club. Good feet. And Thiago still has it. I'm just trying to block any shot that comes in. That's great defending. And no, he's not given a penalty for that. He's not given a penalty for that, has he? There's nothing wrong with that. There's a bit of a coming together. Johan Visser scores, sends 
Uh, sorry, he doesn't send Ramsdale the wrong way. Ramsdale goes the right way, but Johan Visser finds the net. I cannot believe that the referee's given that as a penalty, though. That's really, really soft. Visser into that top corner. Ramsdale can't get there. And right before we reach the half-time whistle, Southampton are pegged back in a half where we've played really well. Mikhail Damsgaard, but Taylor, who... To be fair, he's had a really good start to the season. Does well there. Now, Lalana slides through Armstrong. Can he get away? Under pressure, Armstrong denied, but Brereton Diaz is on hand. Go and celebrate with those Saints fans down in the corner. But Adam Armstrong forces the save out of the keeper. It's not a very good hand. And he palms it straight into the path of the Chilean Brereton Diaz. He gets his first of the year. And Southampton back in front and looks set for back-to-back -back victories in the Premier League. Five to play here, Sharder off the bench looking to run at our tired defence and Kevin Sharder with those fresh legs into the penalty area. Picks out Igor Thiago, goes back to Damsgaard, strange decision. There's Igor Thiago again and what a save, Aaron Ramsdale with four seconds to play. That's a huge fingertip stop over the top of the crossbar. And the Brentford corner swung in. Ramsdale comes for it again, claims it, and that is going to do it. That could be a huge save from Aaron Ramsdale come the end of the season. I do think having a good keeper is so, so important. We saw last year on FC24, Wes Fodderingham in our Blades career mode. How many howlers did he throw in? If you saw that save, as another glitch here with Armstrong. If you watch that save, you'll know how many howlers Wes Fodderingham dropped in that first year. Having a good goalkeeper is so, so important. And, well, he's already saved us the points there. Back-to-back -back victories for the Saints, and we've got Aaron Ramsdale to thank for it. Well, we're into transfer deadline day here. Looks as if it's a pretty similar layout to what we saw last year as Gabriel Jesus departs Arsenal for Bayer Leverkusen. I would like to potentially bring in one more body just to bolster out the squad. Um, I don't think I'm going to shift anyone on, but looking at the players that we've got on our shortlist... Potentially a centre-back. We've got uh, Matt Clark and Dale Fry, both from the Borough. Rob Atkinson is a big six-foot-four central defender from uh, Bristol City. I've got Bobby Thomas, who's a young defender at Coventry. Um, and Ben Cabango, the, uh, the Welshman from Swansea. Um, potentially a central midfielder. I mentioned Ben Sheaf in the previous episode. I've also got Josh Eccles there and Dan Neal as well, who I really, really like from Sunderland. He's got, yeah, 90 stamina. Really, um, really quick physical player. Pretty decent on the ball as well. I do like the idea of potentially Dan Neal or Ilya Gruev of Leeds. I think looking at the two, we obviously did sign um, Shirkin from Sunderland already. I do quite like the idea of bringing Gruev. He's not like a, a key player at Leeds. And I, I don't think I've ever signed a Bulgarian in career mode. He's got pretty decent stamina as well. He's not quite as physical as Dan Neal. But he's probably better on the ball as sort of like a deep line playmaker. Left footed, six foot one. I, I think I'm going to go for Gruev. I've never used him before. I don't think I've ever used a Bulgarian before. And um, I don't think he's like one of the absolute first names on the team sheet at Ellen Road. They're happy with a, a market valuation bid of five million pounds. So I think Ilya Gruev could be a decent signing as a squad player. Only 24 years of age. So he's, um, he's still pretty young. He wants to be important, so we will give him the squad role. I think Dan Neal probably has a little bit more potential than Gruev. But the fact that I've never used him before, as I say, he's a, um, a Bulgarian, uh, a, a nation that I don't think I've ever used before as well. I'm really excited to bring Ilya Gruev to the Premier League. So Gruev is in, and I actually think looking at his stats, he's a really good signing because he's so versatile. I could definitely see him playing in his, you know, natural CDM position, but I think at six foot one as well, he could certainly slot in on the left side of our back three if we were short there. He could definitely do a job at left wing back as well because he's just solid across the board. So I actually think that's a, a really good signing. Wow, big move there. 
and uh, all the updates and everything to career mode, but the transfer market's still all over the place as Jared Bowen has left West Ham for Real Madrid. I mean, he's had a good couple of seasons, don't get me wrong, but I'm not too sure the Galacticos would come calling for the uh, the Englishman from West Ham. They've replaced him with Jeremy Pino, which is a, um, a great signing as Antonio Silva's gone to Liverpool. Kingsley Coman to uh, to Barcelona that's that's actually a transfer I could see happening um, is the the top move of the window so we'll sim through now officially through the summer window and uh, currently sitting in seventh place in the Premier League who would have thought it certainly not me yes we've had two fixtures that I would say are certainly winnable away at Brentford and at home to Nottingham Forest but considering Southampton have no points on the board in real life to have six in our opening three games is uh, is pretty impressive but it does get harder for us as we now host Manchester United this fixture has just been played in the the previous weekend and Manchester United won it by three goals to nil but of course, Cameron Archer missed a penalty in the first half just a few minutes before United took the lead. So it could have been a very different game. But jumping into this here, United are two wins from two in their opening games in the Premier League. So I am expecting us to probably fall to defeat here. But I would certainly take a point if we can get it. Come on, you saints. Right then, off and underway here at St Mary's. Luckily, most of my players have returned from the international break fully fit. So, only one change. Nathan Wood comes into the side for Jack Stevens, of course. Still no Bella Kochap was out for a number of months. But our first test against one of the traditional top six here. So, I'm quite interested to see how we get on because I, I don't want to say it's been easy so far, but... Two wins in our opening three games is a pretty good return as United are going to go ahead and score straight away. Oh, big save by Ramsdale. Yeah, I don't want to say it's been an easy start. So against one of the traditional top six here, I want to see if we get absolutely torn apart or whether we can compete with them. So far, it's been all United pressure. And there is Rasmus Hoyland opening the scoring for the Red Devils. So into the second half here, still trailing by just one. So not the uh, not the worst scoreline in the world. We're still just about clinging on and in the game, but we've not really created anything. Had that one chance that we tried to catch out Onana, but yes, it's, it's been all United, pretty comfortable as Mateus Fernandez. Well, that one has tested Onana a little bit more. Brereton Diaz will swing the corner in, looking for Bednarek at the near post. And I am seeing a, um, a big difference in quality between the sides at the top of the table as the referee waves that away. Like when we face Newcastle at St James's and United here, there is a big difference in quality as Hoyland finds Rashford. It's going to be two. Brilliant little bit of dribbling between our two defenders. And Marcus Rashford doubles the lead, as he did here in real life just last weekend. Rashford down the left, looking to add a third, as United did in real life. Into Hoyland on the spin. Oh, it's a penalty. And United are going to get a late third. It's a penalty and a yellow card for Jan Bednarek. I, I went to try and block the shot, and I was absolutely nowhere near it. Penalty for Bruno Fernandez, a hop and a jump and a brilliant penalty into the top corner. United do have their third and it's going to be a, uh, a match of the result in, uh, in real life. 3-0 to United, they matched it in the game. And to be fair, they've been by far the better side here today. Southampton given a little bit of a humbling and to be fair, it's what I expected hosting one of the traditional top six. I'm not expecting to pick up any points in these games. Bruno Fernandes rounds off the victory from the penalty spot, but it is a comfortable win for the Red Devils who make it three wins from three in the Premier League. Well, before jumping into our next game away at the Valley to take on Charlton Athletic, I actually forgot that we've got a um, an academy update. So 
Let's check out our youth staff. Let's see if we found any more good young Scottish keepers. There's a lot of them in there, to be fair. Most of them, yeah, looking like they've got pretty poor potential. Yeah, I think I'm just going to reject all of these guys. No one with any good potential. As for England, of course, just looking for any players here. There's not many, but to be fair, Connor Cox looks like he could be pretty decent. Um... Striker left wing, right wing, false nine. Looks like he could be decent. Let, let's chuck him in for now. Uh, Matthew Hodgson also looks pretty decent. 81 to 94 potential. Um, as for the other three, we will reject these. So a couple of players there looking like they could be okay. Finally, let's take a look from Cyprus, hoping to find someone here. So Matthias Papadopoulos was the guy that we scouted in the previous month, but his potential looks like it's dropped. Is there anyone here with some decent potential? Not really. To be fair, we only need one more player. Uh, Dimitri looks like he's got a decent starting overall. Well, I have just added a few of the youth players into the squad. So I think we can now potentially, yeah, play a youth tournament. Let's jump into a game. It's, it's against Chelsea's youth team. Um, so let, let's just see what this is all about, because this is quite fun, to be fair. Yeah, jumping into this here, of course, 5v5 new rush game mode. This guy's an absolute unit. Look at Cox go. Go on, Coxie boy. Squared across and we lead already. Perfect start. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really too sure what, what the... Um, I, I like the Youth Academy. I'm not really too sure how much I'm going to play this. I'm, a lot of it will probably be off camera. I didn't mean to shoot then. Um, if I am playing it, a lot of it's probably going to be off camera. Yeah, I think that once you... Oh, he can't be offside. Coxie, can he finish? Yes, he can. The big man, Cox. I love this guy. Yeah, I think obviously this will give your players a, um, a, a, a big boost. I don't know how much of a boost it's going to give them. But playing in the youth tournaments gives your players a boost. So that will help with the development because a lot of them seem like they're quite lowly rated. So guys, I've just finished the game. Connor Cox, I tell you what, this little baby face boy, he was fantastic. I really liked him. Yeah, so we've now gone into the semi-finals and we've got 46 days uh, in, in game, obviously, to finish that. I tell you what, Connor Cox, remember the name, because this lad looks phenomenal. I like the look of him. Six foot two already at 16 years of age. He, he's very, very decent. I like the look of this lad. Well, guys, I tell you what, as we've um, sort of had a bit of a play around with the Youth Academy there, we'll close out today's episode with this one, taking on Charlton Athletic in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Looking to make it into the fourth round. Again, I'll be fielding a much weaker side, but taking on a League One opponent, we should be targeting progression to the fourth round. So let's see if we can get there. Away from home at the Valley. Come on, you Saints. Small bone. Bringing the ball forward and finding Armstrong. Been a pretty poor game so far. Lana on the spin. Looking for Armstrong, and he just about clips it in. Kisses the post. Oh, that's a good ball through. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, Bazunu onto the post. And cleared forward. Onuachu should win the header and does. It's not a very good header. And still Charlton pressing for that equalising goal. Bazunu pushing that onto the post. And just trying to see this out here. Small finds Doherty. Oh, it's brilliant. Strike comes in, I don't believe it. It's been an awful, awful game. And the last kick of the game, Charlton equalised, and I think we are heading to a penalty shootout. Well, I'll be honest, heading into this, I'm not really feeling one bit confident because I know what penalties are like on next gen. For some reason, no matter if you go the right way or not, you just do not save them. Onuachu up first for us, does fire it into the top corner. You've already seen me a few times going the right way from these pens and getting nowhere near them. The goal scorer does send his into the top corner. Ryan Fraser up next also sends it into the top corner. Both teams two from two. Coventry surely changing it up. No, he goes into the bottom corner, same way. And Corne 
is going to do the same here into that bottom corner. Both teams three from three. Campbell. Oh, Bazunu just gets there. And Smallbone has the chance to put us into the lead. Smallbone into the top corner. No, he's denied. Doherty, he's going the other way. Oh, down the middle, you cheeky little bugger. Suleimana does send it into the top bins. Into sudden death. Gillespie surely changing up. He's gone the same way again. I can't believe this. Ilya Gruev on his debut has to score and does just about into the top corner. Small, surely not the same way again. Oh, I don't believe this. The one time I change up. Just about into the top corner. This is ridiculous. This is going to be like the... Uh, the Preston Fulham shootout. Again, I've gone the wrong way. Re into the top corner just about. Watson. Oh, down the middle. I can't believe this. This is insane. Not feeling confident with the centre-back. He does send it into the top bins, though. Mitchell, come on. Bazunu gets there. Come on. Jan Bednarek wearing the armband has the chance. Bednarek into the top bins, please. There we go. And we've done it the hard way. Um, Jan Bednarek with the winning penalty in what was a ridiculous shootout. But it is the Saints heading through. Let's go and end the episode by finding out who it is we will face in the fourth round. Yeah, so unfortunately we can't find out who it is we'll face because for some reason not all of the games have been played. Um, I'm sure they're all played at the same time, but we'll have to wait until the next episode. But um, that is where we will leave it for today, guys. Episode 2 of the save. A few more games in the Premier League and the Cup. And you can see Southampton currently sat in 10th place. So it's not been a terrible start to the season. Two wins on the board against two of the sides I would have potentially expected us to be. And two losses against the sides I would expect us to lose against in Manchester United and Newcastle. But just four games in, it's been a decent start. And my main objective this year is just to make sure we remain in the top flight. But as I say, guys, that will do it. We'll be back in the next episode coming out tomorrow, Monday at 4.30. So three episodes back to back to back to kick off FC 25. I hope you are enjoying in the next episode we're going to crack on through part one of sloggy season and uh, really kick on with some more games so you definitely won't want to miss that i'll catch you for that next episode very soon guys take care and peace <laughs>